Thank you to Ritual for sponsoring today's video. More on them later. Your wardrobe does not need to be niche. We're going to talk about this in today's video. Hello everyone, Jennifer L. Scott here and welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. I am the author of the Madame Chic series and in Lessons from Madame Chic, I introduced the concept of the 10 item wardrobe. And this is a wardrobe system that has completely changed my life and the longer I do it, the more I uncover about my true style. As part of this process, I encourage you to journal about your style, like if you're trying to uncover it for yourself. And each season I choose three adjectives that I feel I want my style to reflect or that would represent the wardrobe that I would like. And so my adjectives this year are elegant, whimsical, and free spirited. And I uncovered those adjectives after journaling about it and pondering it for quite some time. So I highly recommend that you do the same thing and I would love to know what your three adjectives are down below. But while I was doing this experiment this year, I realized something profound <laughs> about my true style. And this is the first time that this revelation has come to me, and it's that my style is not niche. Now the word niche can mean a few things, but technically, if I were to give you the technical definition of it, it means a specialized segment of the market for a particular kind of product or service. Okay, so this is in terms of business. An easier way to look at it is this. If you're watching YouTube, you're probably familiar with the platform. The advice for creators is always to go niche so that your channel really expands because when you focus in on a specific topic and you stick with it, uh, more people are able to find you through the algorithm, for example. So I started thinking about this and I realized that my style is not niche. And I realized this because of my adjectives. My adjectives are elegant, whimsical, and free-spirited. And I chose free-spirited this year because that is really where my heart is feeling like I want to express. And it was just something that came to me and I thought, yes, free-spirited, okay? But how does free-spirited meet with elegant? Well, then I started in my journaling process drawing a Venn diagram. And I did this and I wrote elegant in the left-hand circle and free-spirited in the right-hand circle because those two, for some reason, feel at different sides of the spectrum, you know? Like elegant seems more put together. Like maybe the cardigan I'm wearing today is very elegant. And free-spirited is more free-flowing, maybe like a more of a bohemian style. And I realized that my middle adjective, whimsical, actually fits in the middle of that Venn diagram because elegant can also be whimsical and so can free-spirited. So I realized that you know, my style is not niche. And this brings so much clarity to me because I think a lot of people, when they're trying to label their true style, they stick with one aspect of their style and they might see like, like let's say if you're very classic, but you see this beautiful maxi dress that has really like free flowing, maybe even a hippie vibe to it, okay? And you think, I love that, but it's not really with my style, like who I am, so I'm not going to buy it. And you never explore that aspect of yourself with your style. But you know, it's actually okay to be one person and have a spectrum on your style where you do go from elegant and more classic to more free-spirited and free-flowing. Now, is this true for everybody? Does everybody have a chameleon sense of style? No. And here are two examples that you will be very familiar with if you've read my books. So if you take the example of Madame Chic, she did have a niche style. And if you take the example of Madame Bohemienne in my books, she had a niche style. So in all the time that I lived with and observed these people, I never saw Madame Chic switch her style up like that. Like she was really classic, really elegant. She wore pearls, silk blouses, A-line skirts, pantyhose, low-heeled leather shoes. That was her kind of uniform. And 
I would say if I were to choose three adjectives for her, it would be elegant, classic, and traditional. But I never can't even imagine her wearing a long, free-flowing, bohemian-style maxi dress. I just can't see it, okay? So she did have a niche style. And then if you're looking at Madame Bohemienne from my book, she loved wearing long, flowy maxi skirts, open-toed sandals. Her hair was really curly and she always had it down and just kind of like blowing in the wind wild. It was never styled, uh, you know, like quaffed. And so she had a very bohemian, free-spirited style wardrobe. And I could not even picture her wearing the type of clothes that Madame Chic wore. I cannot picture the, you know, the pantyhose and the heels and the silk blouses and the pearls. It just wasn't who she was, okay? So both of those women did have a niche style. So you might be watching this and think, no, I have a niche style. I only dress a certain way. And that's fine. In fact, that's wonderful that you know that about yourself. But there is a spectrum of people that have different aspects to their personality that like to express both. And I realized that about myself during this journaling process. And not only is that okay, but it's very exciting. I have so much more to say about this, but I want to take a minute to thank Ritual for sponsoring a portion of this video. With supplements, less can be more. So many vitamin brands on the market contain excess nutrients that our body doesn't need, while Ritual's Essential for Women's 18 Plus is research stacked and science backed. This is the supplement that can increase vitamin D levels by 43% in a clinical study. The Essential for Women's 18 Plus is a clinical backed multivitamin formulated to support key nutrient needs of women ages 18 to 49. They have delayed release capsules shown to dissolve later in the small intestine, an optimal place for nutrient absorption. Ritual goes above and beyond in certifying and verifying its products so you can feel that much more confident in your daily ritual. The Essential for Women's 18 Plus is USP Verified, a third-party quality certification that sets one of the highest bars for product transparency. Less than 1% of multivitamins have earned this mark. So thank you to Ritual for sponsoring a portion of this video. For 25% off of your first order of Ritual, go to ritual.com forward slash daily C25 and use code daily C25. Okay, so your ears might be perking up in this video and you might be thinking, thinking, I think that's me. I think that this is me. I am not niche. How do you find this out? Let's go back to the three adjectives. I recommend that you get a pen and paper and write them down. So journal about this. What are your three adjectives? And you're going to notice that they either all fit into a niche category or they don't. And I don't want you to censor yourself. Don't think, oh, well, I can't have this because I'm more like this. I can't have cottage core because I'm also classic. Yes, you can. Okay, so don't censor yourself and write down your three adjectives. Let's look at some examples of three adjectives that are similar. Let's say you write down classic, elegant, and preppy. Okay, so if you write those down, you know that your style is kind of niche and that last adjective there, preppy, might infuse a lot of what your style is and that might be more like polo shirts and argyle sweaters and that type of thing, okay? Or you might, for example, write down whimsical, cottagecore, and fairy-like. Those could be your three adjectives. And those are all kind of the same niche topic as well, so you're, you're not gonna have trouble finding your clothes. But you might be like me, and let's say your adjectives like mine this season are elegant, whimsical, and free-spirited. I realized when I wrote free-spirited that something's trying to come out <laughs> of me. Some aspect of my style is wanting to be brought to the surface. And sometimes, both as men and women, I think, we repress aspects of our style. And for whatever reason, like we don't want people to think that we're weird or judge us or feel like we're immature or too old to wear a certain type of thing or we don't want to draw attention to ourselves. So the point in the journaling and not censoring yourself is to uncover these aspects of yourself and bring them to the surface to see what you can find. Now, your adjectives are not set in stone. You can explore this season with your three adjectives and you're gonna notice what works and what doesn't work. 
if you're exploring a more free-spirited style and let's say you add some beautiful maxi dresses, maxi skirts, or just something very fairy-like and flowing and you feel uncomfortable in it, then you know, okay, I explored that. That's not really me. I feel more expressive and comfortable in my more classic pieces. Either way, there are no mistakes. If you find something doesn't work, you're that much closer to uncovering what does. Or if you find what does work, this is fantastic and now you know. And also, it is okay for you to go from more of a classic style to something the complete opposite of that. That can exist in one person and it's okay. Some people just express more of a spectrum of different types of styles. And I do realize that that is who I am and I'm okay with that. <laughs> so this exercise is really an effort to know thyself as Socrates says, and to know what your style is and whatever it is, to embrace it and to wear it. And that's when you're going to enter that flow state with your style where you love everything in your wardrobe. You're not dressing to please other people, but when you dress for yourself, authentically expressing your true style, the backwards effect is that you do please other people because they look at you and they just appreciate it. I wanted to end by reading this testimonial that I got. This is a comment on my last wardrobe video from Melly Golightly. She said, for me, this wardrobe system is the best and easiest to maintain. One main benefit for me was to get more content with my clothes and to want and shop less. There were times when I was never happy with my wardrobe and I wanted to replace almost everything each upcoming season, which is stressful, expensive, and eventually impossible. Now I review my small collection before the season, or I take note at the end of the season what I will need the next time this season comes around. Often I'm still happy with most of it and look forward to wearing the pieces. I used to dread the new seasons because I had quote, nothing to wear. And if I want to replace something or try something new, it is only one to three pieces now. So I love that testimony on the 10 item wardrobe. I know that so many of you have had similar breakthroughs and that makes me so happy. If you're interested in learning more about the 10 item wardrobe, you could read my Madame Chic books. I have an affordable e-course on the subject. I also did a TEDx talk on the 10 item wardrobe. I will leave all of those resources for you down below. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I would love to know in the comment section what your three adjectives are and whether or not you think your style is niche. Let us know in the comments down below and I can't wait to hear from you. Thank you to Ritual for sponsoring a portion of today's video. For 25% off your first order of Ritual, go to ritual.com forward slash daily C25 and use code daily C25. Thank you for joining us today here on The Daily Connoisseur. Keep calm and remain stylish, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.